Bartman wipes the back of his hand across his forehead before lowering his cap back on his sweat-soaked hair. He watches the company supply sergeant run back from the corner ahead as a dust cloud creeps closer on the horizon. American tanks on the road at 500 meter. Hapshan Führer Heinz looking up Barkman leaning from the command hatch of their Panther tank. Excellent, Barkman replies. We will attack. He switched his throat mic on. Driver, forward. Halt under the next large tree. That should stop the aircraft from finding us and give us an excellent place to ambush the column. The heavy Panther rocks back with a roar as the 75mm round flies towards its target. A second later, the lead M4 Sherman tank explodes in a dazzling display of sparks. Even before the dust from the muzzle blast clears, time stands still the loader rams round after round into the smoking breach, each shot rocking their tank as the enemy tank after tank explodes just to hit his front. Return shots bounce off the tick of the steel of the Panther, the American guns unable to score a kill. Carefully, he pulls back to the next tree, reassuming the fight from there. Hearing the scream of the aircraft engines in a steep dive, Barkman drops into the turret just as a tank is lifted into the air on the blast of the first bomb. The Panther is sprayed with bomb fragments. Moans come from the, his headphone and the daylight streams through the crack in the sides of the tank. Heinz, Barman called to his driver, his own voice lost in the ringing of ears. Can we still move? Can you get us out of here? Panther tanks fire slanken, the Americans fire redoubles. A run clangs against the armor, another smashes the track damaged by the bomb forcing the panther to slow violently to the left. The tank lurks again and then grins back around the corner, grunts of the pain accompanying every moment of the vehicle. Poggendorf, see what you can do for Heinz, Barkman orders. We must get back to the workshop so we can fight again tomorrow. Ernst, Heinz breathed through the gritted teeth. I'm not leaving our Panther for the Americans. We will make it home. The Panther pulls out for a home under the fading sun, leaving behind nine smoldering Sherman tanks on the field of the battle. Not a bad day, after all. And you can ask, who was this badass tank commander? His name is Ernst Barkman. He was born in the town of Kisdorf in Holstein. His father was a farmer and after attending a school, Barkman followed in his father's footsteps and began to work in, in the family farm. In 1936, Barkman enlisted in the SS as a foot soldier and was assigned to the SS Standard Germania, headquarters in north of German city of Hamburg. Standard Germania was a regiment was posted to East Prussia in anticipation of the hostilities against Poland where it was to act as a part of the 14th Army. With the outbreak of the war, 1st September 1939, Barkman saw action with this formation in the invasion of Poland, serving as a machine gunner. He fought well during the campaign, receiving a promotion to Rottenführer. Receiving the infantry assault badge, he was also wounded during the campaign and received the wound badge in black. In October 1939, the Germania was used to form a part of the SS division, where von Guck's Truppe. In the May 1940, Barkman took a part in the invasion of France as this part of this division. Barkman served with this division during Operation Barbarossa, before being seriously wounded near Dnyorevsrovsk in July 1941. He spent the remaining time of 1941 recovering and received the bound badge in silver. In early 1942, Parkman was posted as an instructor to the unit in Netherlands, where he was responsible for training European SS volunteers. 
Later, Parkman requested a transfer to the newly formed Waffen SS Panzer Arm. In winter 1942, he was sent back to the Eastern Front to join the second company of the 1st SS Panzer Regiment, Das Reich, the part of the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division. Upon arrival at the front, Parkman was posted as a gunner to the SS Rottenführer Alfred Hargesheimer's Panzer III tank. The Das Reich was attached to the Obergruppenführer Paul Hauser SS Panzer Corps under the overall command of the General Marshal Meinstein's Army Group South. The SS Panzer Corps was to form the vanguard of Meinstein's effort to halt the Soviet advance near Kharkov. Barkman served with the regiment during the large-scale mobile operation to annihilate mobile group Propov. During these battles, Barkman proved to be an excellent gunner. He was promoted to Untersaarführer and given command of his own Panzer III tank, this time part to ensuring the third battle of Kharkov, scoring several kills as well. In July 1943, his division next took a part in Operation Citadel, the operation to destroy the Kurk Silent. Barkman saw the action during the Mammoth tank battles around Provhorovka. During these battles, the Heers Großdeutschland Panzer Division had been equipped with the state-of-art Panzer Auf D tanks. Their combat debut was poor with many vehicles suffering mechanical problems before even entering the battle. After the failure of the offensive, as the division was rapidly transferred to the Meuse River, where along the 3rd SS Panzergradion Division Totenkov, it was engaged in fierce uh, defensive battles. In August, Barkman was transferred to the 4th Company, equipped with the new Panther D tanks, which had by now overcome their early mechanical problems. And the commander of the Panzer Regiment thus raised, Barkman was responsible for the destruction of many enemy tanks. In the course of these operations, he was awarded both classes of Iron Cross. The Das Reich Division remained on the Eastern Front until January 1944. In early February, the division was ordered to France to refit and form the part of the Panzergruppe West, the armored reserve for the expected Allied invasion. Leaving its remaining armor behind for the other divisions to use, the Das Reich was posted to Bordeaux region. Exception of several skirmishes with partisans, the refit was uninfluential. Barkman, along with the rest of the battalion of the Panzer Regiment, was equipped with a new model of Panther tanks. Operation Overlord, the expected Allied invasion, was launched on 6 of June 1944. When the division was released for action by the Führer headquarters, it was placed on high alert and remained in South France in case of the secondary invasion. It there. When it became clear, the Normandy invasion was the major allied effort. The division was ordered to north to the front. The division's transit to the front was attacked by partisan and heavy aircraft. Barkman and the Panzer Regiment were not involved with the massacre of Ordursu Glane committed by the Panzer Grenadier units of the division. The division finally reached the front in early July and was thrown into action against the American force near St. Lake. Barkman and his Panther A saw heavy fighting against the American M4 Shermans and MA51 Stuart in the Bocage. The narrow sunken roads, an impossible hedge grove of Bocage, meant that the German could establish a deadly defensive line and the American material advantage could not be exploited. Mark Mans claims he inflicted heavy casualties on the advancing Americans and halted a major armored advance near Le Neufburg. This conflict with the U.S. accounts for the area that mentioned an action with the unit protecting the flank of the main U.S. advance. They had heavy casualties and many destroyed tanks. For his claims, Barkman was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. After the launch of Operation Cobra, the Das Reich avoided the encirclement in the Falaise pocket and alongside with the 9th Panzer Division fought to hold open to escape route for the trapped German forces. After the collapse of the pocket, the Das Reich fell back towards the West Wall. 
During the retreat, Barkman was involved in many desperate rearguards actions, destroying many American vehicles. Later on, promoted to Oberskaffrührer, the rank he held to end of the war, Barkman continues his successful career and took part of the Ardennes offensive in December 1944, where on December 25 he was seriously wounded. During the Ardennes offensive, Barkman's Panther G drove into the group of American tanks from the US 2nd Armor Division. Despite being outnumbered, Barkman managed to knock out a few Sherman tanks. One Sherman rams Barkman Panthers and did not cause much damage, although both tanks got stuck and the Panthers engine stalled. After a few minutes, Barkman's mechanic managed to restart the engine and the Panther retreated with a blocked turret. Despite the damage, Barkman knocked out a pursuing Sherman and retreated to safety, although his Panther was beyond repair. In March 1945, Barkman was once again fighting with the Soviet near Stufwesenburg, where he knocked out four T-34s and brought the total score of the Das Reich Division for the war so far its 3,000 enemy tanks destroyed. At the time, the Das Reich was exhausted by the non-stop fighting and the lack of replacement tanks. Barkman's unit had only nine fully operational vehicles, of which three were soon lost to the Soviet Josef Stalin tanks. The remaining six Panthers were ordered to link up with the remains of the Panzer Regiment of the 1st SS Division Liebestand Adolf Hitler. By April 1945, Barkman saw action south of Vienna, Austria. There his Panther was hit by a mistake from friendly fire and Barkman along with most of his crew members were wounded. Later on, his Panther became disabled in a huge bomb crater and destroyed by its crew. Ernst Barkman was able to reach British zone of operation, where he was made a prisoner of war. After the war, Barkman settled in Kisdorf, Germany, where he was a long-time fire chief. Barkman also served as a town's major. I hope guys you enjoyed this episode about uh, Ernst Barkman. If you do, please like or subscribe and see you in the next one.